We're cooking up some spicy takes on a Saturday special of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, including a little look into what's going on with Jake Gensel and these red-hot Carolina Hurricanes. Let's tap in. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Saturday, hockey heads. It's a day for puck, and you're tapped into a Saturday special of your source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Shout out to the everydayers holding us down, making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's $200. Bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Steal the Madness is well underway in the NCAA realm. But we've got things to talk about on today's episode, which is why we're popping up for a Saturday special. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming next week, Monday through Friday. Thank you for holding us down. But today, we're going to talk about Sid. Jake Gensel. There was a lot of angles discussed. Steel could Gensel survive without Sid? What are the Penguins going to do? I know you have some takes here, but also this Hurricanes team is cooking. And I highlighted it when Freddie came back that all these things are starting to fall into place for them at the right time, and it's working. Speaking of which, Captain D Lark, the Lark Knight, he's back. Dylan Larkin, this is big news for the for the Red Wings. We'll talk about that. The Art Ross race is down to a ten. Point three horse race steal Saturday's bets. I'm all kinds of fired up right over to you, brother, because I know this angle here that you brought up to me yesterday off air, I think is very intriguing because we're going to get to see if Jake Gensel can do it on his own very quickly here. Cause the penguins aren't going to be playing in the spring and the hurricanes will be. Yeah. And I think we've already seen Jake Gensel get it done on his own and, and, and he's already put up. What True. is it? Eight points. He has, sorry. Nine points. Wait, no, eight points, excuse me. Eight points in six games for there Jake Gensel with the Carolina Hurricanes. 18 shots, eight hits, four blocks. He's already getting it done. And, you know, mm-hmm. there was a lot of people in the hockey community, the fantasy hockey community, saying that sure. come next season, if Jake Gensel were traded, he might fall down the draft board. He might slide down a bit because he's not playing with Sidney Crosby. I, I talked about this uh, maybe two weeks ago about, mm. yeah, d- does it help playing with Sidney Crosby? Has it helped his career? Of course it of has course. helped his career. He's gotten to a point now where he's just entered his prime, but he yeah. doesn't need – he doesn't need to be playing with Sidney Crosby to be a uh, to be a star by himself. And again, we talked about it a few weeks ago. He's playing with the likes of Sebastian Ajo, Seth Jarvis, Andre Svechnikov, Evgeny Kuznetsov. Now he's got a lot of talent around him. And yeah, playing with the best player who's all you know one of the best players who's ever played the game in Sidney Crosby. Mm. It's gonna help you no matter what. But he's at a point now in his career where he is in his prime and he's going to do it by himself or do it with the, with his teammates on the Carolina Hurricanes. So for me, uh, I don't think I don't think Jake Gensel is going to be a guy personally. He's not going to slide down the draft standings for me. I'm going to be picking him up. Um, yeah. you know, I'm going to have to take a look at his average ADP and and where he was falling this year and what's whatnot. But I don't expect him to fall by any means in next year's fantasy draft. Not like postseason production actually, you know, equates to any kind of fantasy value, right? Usually seasons are done by then, unless you're in a a a playoff pool like we talked about. However, we know that good playoff performances usually inflate a player's value, sometimes inaccurately. But the Carolina Hurricanes, you can't help believe, are going to be playing at least a couple of rounds of hockey. And if Jake Gensel is a big part of that steal, to your point about where he's at on the draft board, I can't help but feel he's going up it. Because if he starts putting up points in the playoffs, and I'm going to get to your point about with Sid in a second, if he starts putting up points in the playoffs, most and proving even more to your point, most definitely he goes up that draft board because it means he's forming chemistry with those very likes of Ajo, Seth Jarvis, who's on fire, and otherwise. Let me leave it at this, though, in terms of his, you know, leaning on Sid. Of course his numbers can't be hurt by playing with 87, but let me throw this at you, Steele, because I remember when Jake Gensel came into the NHL, I had my eyes all over him for fantasy because of 
his ability to get it done at the AHL level. And let me tell you what, I don't think Sidney was down there playing with Wilkes Bear Scranton. And how about this? When he came up to the NHL, he had 42 points in 33 games in the AHL, and he was leading the AHL in scoring at that time when he was called up by the Penguins for obvious reasons. So he's been getting it done wherever he goes to play, and I'm agreeing with you. It all aligns up, and also, take a look at this Hurricanes team go now. Yeah. If you're okay with it, let's slide right into that because they have five wins in a row. Steel, are they the best team in the East? Because when I dig into the numbers a little bit, right, we've looked at the Caps, we've looked at the Kings, we've looked at some of these teams that the underlying numbers aren't so pretty. By the way, that's a fire bucket you're rocking, which I believe is the <laughs> LA Kings old school yes, logo. Sir. Well, it's a dirty hat. Is the numbers for the Carolina Hurricanes actually back them up here in terms of one of the best teams in the league? Steel. No other team allows less shots per game than the Carolina Hurricanes at 25.7. Less than 27 shots per game in today's NHL is straight up impressive. Now they got Freddie back. Now they got some more guns up front. Why not this team out of the East deal? Why not? I'm going with no. They aren't the best team okay. in the league, and they also aren't the best team in the Eastern Conference. But it okay. goes to show how dangerous the Eastern Conference has become, especially after the trade deadline. I've still got the New York Rangers number one, the Florida mm. Panthers number two, and then the Carolina sure. Hurricanes number three. But okay. all three of those teams are very, very close within one another. So, sure. I mean, it's a very close race in the uh, Eastern Conference right now, especially the Metro and the Atlantic top two place, uh, top two positions right now. Mm. But the Carolina Hurricanes, when you look at them on paper, I mean, th it's as sound as you could possibly think of. Right. You've got two studs. You've got a veteran goaltender who's coming back from, you know, a very serious medical issue yeah. uh, who can really be a mentor for Pyotr Kochetkov. Uh, Ko Kochetkov has been, you know, very good recently as well. He's been an uh, up-and-comer and shows very high mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. The blue line. The yep. blue line for the Carolina Hurricanes might be one of the most Perfect. underrated blue lines in the yes. NHL as well. Brady Shea is an absolute beast. Brent Burns has struggled offensively a little bit, but he's still getting it done. Mm -hmm. uh, Brett mm -hmm. Pesci, um, you know, Chatfield as well. The blue line is very they underrated. They got Orlov still, don't they? Well, Dimitri Orlov has been great. Yeah. I just picked him up in one of my fantasy leagues. Actually uh, picked him up for my fantasy league that I'm in the playoffs for right now because he's been yeah. getting it done mm -hmm. on the offensive side. Underrated as well. Categorical, uh, categorical as well but then you just look at the top the top uh top four lines for the uh carolina hurricanes great top six and then you've got great center depth all all the way down the middle and mm -hmm. sebastian aho of getting who's nets off now jordan stall yes for kakinyemi martin nakash like you said seth jarvis has got a goal streak going for himself this is yep. a very dangerous team again some a lot a lot of teams that we've talked about over the last week or so um when it comes to the playoff realm of things yeah. These are teams that have struggled to score goals in the first two rounds or first round, Carolina Carolina mm. being one of them. Mm. But now with Jake For Gensel sure. in the mix, you've got Evgeny Kuznetsov uh, sure. showing happiness and passion once again. Sebastian yeah. Ajo. I mean, this is a very dangerous team. I can't deny it, Steele. At this point, I just need the puck to drop on the postseason because we can yes. sit here and posture all day long. 94 points for Carolina, 96 for the Rangers, 94 points for the Florida Panthers, 97 for the Boston Bruins. We could probably sit here and talk about those top four teams as all be having legitimate claims to the best team in the Eastern Conference. Although the Boston Bruins, I might have to remove from that conversation <laughs> just for personal bias reasons. However, the rest of the episode will not be biased. Well, maybe a little bit, but we're going to talk about these Detroit Red Wings deal. Dylan Larkin, D Lark, the Lark Knight. There's a bunch more I could throw out there. I love this player, and I think this is actually huge for the Detroit Red Wings. The Art Ross race is down to 10 points split between Nikita Kucherov, Connor McDavid, and ooh, baby, you know who we're talking about with Nathan McKinnon. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you attract, interview, and hire in one place. Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring tool, and that's Indeed to help you do it all start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on offer valid through March 31st, head over to indeed.com slash locked on and claim your $75 credit before March 31st indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed. 
And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel uh, programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you... Uh, analysis you can't miss, opinions and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Again, mm. thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Hit the subscribe, the follow button, leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. Coming at you with a Saturday special for Fantasy News. Yes, uh, just got done talking about Jake Gensel, Sydney Crosby, mm. Carolina Hurricanes. Let's move over to another Eastern Conference team. Staying Detroit out. Red Wings struggling, but winning games right now. They're holding on to that last wild card mm. spot. And with Washington uh, losing their last game, the New York Islanders on a three-game losing skid right now. They've yep. uh, put up a little bit of distance. Three points on Washington, five points on the New York Islanders, but they don't have games in hand. So it's very, very close right now for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, the Washington Capitals have two games in hand as we speak for the Detroit on the Detroit Red Wings. Look, I think they deserve to be in there when I'm looking at the makeup of those two clubs. And, you know, look, the New Jersey Devils are by far the most dis- disappointing squad when I look at that whole lineup. Sure, say what you will about the Detroit Red Wings. We reaming off a lengthy losing streak at the worst time of the year. Yeah. Having your captain come back into the lineup is obviously huge, huge from a momentum st- standpoint. But look at what Dylan Larkin was doing before coming in to last night's game or sorry, Thursday night's game. He had 26 goals in 55 games. He's basically a point per game player. In my opinion, Steele, aside from his ability to produce, he's their most important player on and off the ice. Look, this is a young Detroit team for the most part up front. I know they do have some veterans, but when you're talking about who they're relying on, it's DeBrincat, it's Raymond, it's Larkin, and I think he is a very, very important cog. That's an obvious statement, but look at him come back. Two goals immediately. Sure, this is huge for fantasy. You got to be a happy GM if you were patient and you stashed Larkin on your IR, which I think was probably a good idea. (laughs) Last point. I'm going to say that this team just holds it down and gets in there. I just really think Vili Huso's injury, and if he was in the cage, makes this team a whole lot different. I'm just not trying to take anything away from Alex Lyons' deal. I just don't know how that's a goalie that you rely on to try and take you even past one series. Yeah, you know, it's uh, talking about... Can he about, do it? Sure. But I yeah, just don't I, I, I mean, if he's red hot, he can do it. And we've seen him yeah. We've seen him at times this season where he looked like he might have been the best goaltender for a week stretch. But, mm. I mean, if Billy Huso was healthy this entire season or wasn't injured as much, I don't even know if that would have made the biggest difference because he Fair. hasn't been playing great Fair. this year for the Detroit Red Wings. That's why they've been going with Alex Lyon for the mm. most part. Good point. Um, I do agree with you, though, that Dylan Larkin is by far the most important player for the Detroit Red Wings, even with mm-hmm. Alex DeBrinkett, Lucas Raymond, Maurice Sider, uh, Patrick Kane. I just want Detroit in the playoffs so we can see Patrick Kane showtime in the postseason yeah. going up against the Boston Bruins, potentially. Uh, sure. I think that I think Red Wings versus Boston would be a great first round matchup. If yeah, it's I'm Red hyped. Wings versus the New York Rangers, New York Rangers are absolutely going to dust them aside uh, in a four game sweep, I believe. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, again, I've been talking about the New York Islanders as a dark horse team. I think they can still be a playoff contender, but I'm running mean, out of time. It, it seems like every time I get my hopes up with the New, yeah. New York, they Islanders, off they, the losing streak. yeah, they start going on a losing streak and that's just yeah. been the case with them. And now that Dylan Larkin's back, Detroit's won their last two games. Uh, I, you know, they're still, what are they? They're three, seven and oh, in their last 10 games. So, I mean, this mm-hmm. is a, this is going to be a very, interesting 12 remaining games for the Detroit Red Wings to hold on to that wild card spot. And I think what it's going to come down to a little bit steel. And that's what I'm pulling up right now is I just wanted to have a quick peek. See at their next couple of games, predators today. They play the predators this afternoon. Tough. One. That's the hottest team in the NHL, right? Then now. they that's got bad. the caps. Oh. Then they've got the hurricanes. Then they've got the Panthers lightning and Rangers. So they chose a really bad time to go on a seven game losing streak because I don't think you can pick tougher opponents right now, Steel, than the Panthers, Preds, and Canes. 
Those three teams are a nightmare situation. And Lightning as well. Five game win streak. Lightning. And then and then you also have the Caps who are on fire and you got Ovi cooking. So if they can get through this stretch, and this is why this was an important topic. You have to think Dylan Larkin is going to be at the center of that. So make sure he's in your lineup on a nightly basis. If he wasn't already, that was a slip because two goals will teach you your lesson. Here we go very quickly, though, Steele, because I think one of our second half bold predictions that I'd like to bring up again was Connor McDavid catching that Nikita Kucherov for the Art Ross. Now, plus 300 for Connor McDavid, a 10-point cushion. Obviously, his work is cut out for him. Ooh, this is a nice segue into bets. But if anyone can do it, it's Connor McDavid, and he's got a very good opportunity to put a whole busload of points in the point column tonight against a team in the Toronto Maple Leafs. Number one, right for the picking. And number two, he loves playing in Toronto. So why not start sprinkling a little bit on McDavid even before? Because you know three or four points against the Leafs is coming, and that number is going to drop to 250 or 200 after the weekend. It might be coming, but I hope it doesn't. Uh, you know, that would be very bad for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Agreed. He, he's coming off a 4.4 assist night in that 8-3 win over the Buffalo Sabres. He is 14 assists away from reaching 100 assists he's gonna get in it. the season. And he is, I think he's going to get it as well. But just yeah. to rattle it off, Nikita Kucherov, 122 points this year. He leads the Art, uh, Art Ross Trophy at minus 230. Then you've got McKinnon. And like you said, it's a three-horse race right now. Nathan McKinnon, 117 points. He's actually behind McDavid, who has less points than him. Yeah. But he's at plus 490. And then McDavid at 112 points is plus 300. That just shows you how ridiculous McDavid can be on a nightly basis, putting mm-hmm. up over two and a half, three and a half points. And he's done it almost uh, every single game over the last five, uh, five games for the Edmonton Oilers. But out of those three... Out of those three players, who do you think is going to make? Who's going to win the Art Ross? And which one do you think is the best odds as well? Well, I think obviously the best odds. It's clear at Connor McDavid, but yeah. <laughs> Nikita Kucherov has been so sensational. 122 points. Like I'm really not trying to take anything away from the Tampa Bay Lightning or Nikita Kucherov. I just also know that the Oilers have a pretty good schedule over the next couple of weeks. And when you see a guy like McDavid go on the heater that he is on, I just can't help but feel he's coming for him with that 10 points back. So will I cop out and say, I think this is Nikita Kucherov's? Yes, I will. But if I were going to sprinkle, I wouldn't even go with Kucherov. I would go a 20 piece on McDavid and just have a little fun, especially knowing that what we just talked about, that angle with him in the Leafs, which is a very, very real thing. Obviously, yeah. the game's going to be happening potentially while you're listening to this Saturday. So let's see what happens, because if he <laughs> does pop a few steel, I will be back into this old FanDuel tab having another look at these <laughs> updated odds. Speaking of which, huge 11-game betting yeah. board, a bit of an up-and-down week for you and I. We're back, and we're going to hit this stretch run on a heater. So let's have at it. It's been pretty good for me, actually. I've been going two for three on a nightly on a two uh two for three on a nightly basis. Just to wrap up, I just want to wrap up with this. Please Nikita Kucherov as well as uh, like the point streak that he is on. Last five games, four points, four points, two points, five points, two points. Like he has just been on that Connor McDavid tier level right yeah. now. And McDavid's still only 10 back. So this is just going to be fun. It's going to be fun down the stretch with all three of these players. We're going to get to big time bets where the money is made. But mm-hmm. first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's March Madness, baby. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or the number one seed, it's time to go dancing, go toe-to-toe on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, player props. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops up until they cut down those nets. Thank you again so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe, the follow button, leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. Seven o'clock in the morning is when you can find our episodes. Flip big time bets where the money is made. Mm. I mean, I'm just going with some favorites here for today. I've got okay. straight money line picks. 
Okay. These are all team favorites and teams that I want to win on Saturday. So I'm, I'm going to go see if that, if that works out for okay. me over the weekend. I don't hate the angle steel. <laughs> You're a bolder man than I. And if you don't mind, then let me hit me with at least one or two picks. Cause I got a same game parlay here and you know what game I'm going to after all that Connor McDavid talk. Oh, yeah, you're probably going, what, McDavid over two and a half points now instead of one and a half? Uh, you might be a little bit surprised on who okay, the player okay. prop is on. So why oh. don't you just hit me with two of yours and I'll pop off all with right. all three. Well, or should I say I'm... poppy off? Oh, okay. That's a little tease right there to the Maple Leafs Oilers game. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm going with just some, you know, teams that are fighting for a playoff spot right now. Teams that are fighting for points, for position as well. Uh, first pick islanders on the money line against the winnipeg jets i think you could easily go to the under five and a half or under six and a half in this matchup but i'm taking the islanders on the money line at home as they continue to fight for a playoff spot you can't you can't lose another game and this is a big game against a very dangerous western conference opponent so you Mm got to get this win doesn't matter how you get it you got to get two points islanders on the money line for my first pick second pick wild on the money line another team fighting for a playoff spot the distance has closed a little bit between the Wild and Golden Knights. The Blues are actually ahead of them, and that's who the Wild are playing on uh, on Saturday night. So I'm taking the Wild on the money line, minus 146 at home, uh, and then the Islanders are plus 114 on the money line at home. Yeah, those are some nice odds for sure. I, hey, look, if you're going to go with your gut, you might as well get some value. Yeah. And I understand where you're leaning towards just kind of feeling it. But if you're going to be taking that strategy, obviously dial the bet back. Yeah. But the odds are the odds. So the value is there. Let me just go off because this is a very, very big game for the Toronto Maple Leafs on yes, Saturday night hosting the Edmonton Oilers. And I'm not trying to say that the Edmonton Oilers have things locked up out West, but sitting at 88 points. And I know They are still, they could somehow close an eight point gap. They have three in hand on Vancouver. I'm just saying I can basically see them locked up in that second spot. Things aren't as rosy for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I know, I know third place for them in the Atlantic is pretty looking pretty solid right now, but a five point cushion on Tampa Bay isn't anything to ride home about. So number one, this is massive for Toronto. And I really expect to see, their absolute best. And Mitch Marner being out has hurt this club steal, and it's been clear. However, if they can put together the hockey that they did against the Washington Capitals, and again, it's the Washington Capitals, <laughs> that's Toronto Maple Leaf hockey. It's got to be poppy. It's got to be them scoring five or six or seven goals. That's just how it rolls. So let me hit it with the over six and a half. That's number one. This is the same game parlay. Number two. I'm taking the Leafs seven, one and two in their last 10 against Edmonton. And I know, I think the last game Edmonton really took it to them four, two. So I'm liking a little bit of a bounce back here. That was a game back in January. They lost four, two. Give me the Leafs on the money line. And let me wrap it up with the guy who's got to be doing it for them. And it's poppy two goals should have been three. This is the kind of game that gets him going on the kind of heater that got him to where he is this year. Was it 57 now? So let me just say this, Austin Matthews, anytime goal, and you know that I dug up to the numbers on his career against Edmonton in 18 career regular season goals. Poppy has 13 regular season tallies. Let's get one more, and let's give me the Austin Matthews anytime goal, Leafs money line, and the over. I'm going to parlay them together. Same game parlay special. Hopefully Berduzzi doesn't go offside of this one. Hey, bud, Berduzzi did it it on purpose. Did it on purpose. Uh, I'm with you on that one because my lock of the night as well. Maple Leafs on the money line against the Edmonton Oilers. Plus plus 102 right now for the Maple Leafs on the money line at home. I'm going with the home bodies on Saturday. Maple Leafs at home, Wild at home, Islanders at home for Saturday. Uh, Big, big games for all three of these teams. I'm hyped. Uh, But I love the same game parlay. I think I like I like the over six and a half. I might That'd not be my like locker the night if I, I might not like up. it for uh for Stuart Skinner as he's in uh, he's on a couple of my rosters right now. So hopefully yeah. it ain't too bad. But I mean uh we'll see what happens Saturday night. Can't it's gonna wait. be an absolute banger of a game between yes, sir. and Oilers. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, go check out Locked On Sports today. Sports Today's YouTube channel, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. They cover 
all the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. You can also check it now on Amazon Fire TV, uh, doing great things over there. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's Saturday special episode with Flip and I. Have a great day out there. Have a great weekend for that matter. Good luck with all your bets tonight, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.